concavity. This will be the next thing we're going to be talking about in 4.3. Concavity has to do with which way the graph bends or shapes. So because of this, we're going to look at when the graph is bent up and when the graph is bent down. We determine concavity by taking the second derivative. So we just covered the first derivative and the first derivative test. Now we're going to cover what the second derivative means in terms of the graph. Let's look at the graph x cubed, which I show right here. The graph x cubed is concave up from 0 to infinity because it looks like someone bent it up. It's concave down from negative infinity to 0 because it bends downwards. This means that the derivative of, the, of x cubed, the function, the derivative of it is decreasing. While the, the derivative is still positive, the slope of the derivative is getting smaller. That's how we determine concave down. It's concave up if the derivative is increasing, so the slope is getting larger. So the de this is the definition. You're going to want to pause the video and make sure you write this down, that the graph of f of x is concave up if y prime is increasing. So if the derivative is increasing, then it's concave up. It's concave down if the derivative is decreasing. What this means is that if it's concave up, we have a smiley face because it's concave up. It bends up. We have a frowny face if it's concave down because it is sad, so it is down. The concavity test. So the way we actually determine if something is concave up or concave down is by looking at where the second derivative is positive and where the second derivative is negative. It is concave up if the second derivative is positive, and it's concave down if the second derivative is negative. So it's pretty easy. All you have to do is take the derivative twice, and then determine set equal to 0, and determine the positive and negative values very similarly to the first derivative test. So example 2. We are going to use the concavity test to determine the concavity of the function y equals x squared. Well, we can see right here, it should be concave up both times. But let's actually do the algebra and determine it. On the interval, 3 comma 10. So we're actually restricting the domain from somewhere like here all the way to out here. So what we need to do is take the derivative twice. So the first derivative is 2x, and the second derivative is just 2. Since 2 is a constant function, so since y double prime equals 2 is a constant function that is always positive, y equals x squared is concave up for all x in the domain of 3 to 10. Oh, concave up. So that's all it is. That's all we have to do. Let's try another one. A little thing that's a little more complicated. So y equals 3 plus sine of x on the interval 0 to 2 pi. So let's take the derivative and you get cosine of x. We take the derivative again and we get negative sine of x. So it's going to really help to look at the graph of this. We go ahead and we're going to graph it here. So to graph negative sine of x, we've got to figure out where it's 0. Well, here we have pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Well, I know there's a 0 here, here, and here. And normally sine looks like this. But because it's negative sign, we're going to look more like this. So then, this is the graph of the second derivative. So we know that the zeros are at pi, 2 pi, and 0. 
And so y double prime is negative. It's negative sine of x is negative on the interval 0 to pi. And y double prime is positive on the interval pi to 2 pi. So because of this, since it's negative on the interval 0 to pi, we know that y equals 3 plus, what was it, uh, sine of x is concave down on the interval 0 to pi, and y equals 3 plus sine of x is concave up on the interval pi to 2 pi. And that's it. We're just using the concavity test to determine where the, our original function is concave up or concave down. So very similarly, we could have used a chart where this is f double prime of x, and we our zeros would have been 0, pi, and 2 pi, and the ones we would have chosen would have been pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And if I plug those in, I get negative sine of pi over 2 is negative 1. So this is negative. And negative sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative negative 1, which is 1, which is positive. So you get the same results. And that's how you use the concavity test.